Hi there. This is going to be a little tutorial about the Wasp Tact video and still camera. We're just going to show you how to set it up and some of the things that you can do with it. It's a very easy to use camera and it's a lot of fun and it gives you pretty much the same features that which you would have with a GoPro Hero 4 Silver but it costs about $200 less retail. Well, first thing you want to do is you get it out of the box. So you cut the seals on either side of the box and then you lift off the clear plastic lid and now you have to get the camera out of the mount. It's on the mount with what they call a J-hook buckle. Hopefully you can see that. Taking it out is quite simple. You just pinch these two little things together here and push it forward out of the mount. I'm going to do this with both hands so you won't be able to see it, but that's how you do it. Just pinch those and push it forward. Oops. Okay. Getting the wrist remote is very simple. You can either unbuckle it or just squeeze it, but you just uh, take it right off this mount. Come on. Okay, it's unbuckled and you can just take it off the mount. There you go, that's taking that off. Okay, now this camera comes with a whole bunch of accessories. To begin with, it's mounted on the J-hook buckle. Okay, see that? Inside the box that the kit is stored on, there's a whole bunch of other things. You get a USB cable for downloading and charging. You get the wall plug for charging the camera up at the house. This mount is for use with a bicycle helmet. It threads through the vent holes and you can mount the camera right on that. This one is more usable for us motorcyclists. This is a handlebar mount, including a little extension piece to set it up a little higher. Okay, that will go from about 5 eighths up to 1 inch handlebars or other tubing. Comes with two stick-on mounts. One is curved, one is flat. These are very strong. I have one of them on my helmet. Here's another J-hook buckle that actually gives you a little more height through here. As you can see, it's a little taller than the one that the camera was originally installed on. This is a little extension piece that you can use with the other mounts to just give you some more height. And this one is to mount the camera on a regular camera type tripod. You can see you've got the threaded thing in the bottom that it will go on and then you just mount the camera on that. And of course it also comes with the battery which we will uh, show you the installation on. And it comes with a nice little instruction book. Now personally I found these to be microscopically small so I went on waspcam.com and I went to support and printed out the instructions in a 8.5 by 11 format, which I am finding a whole lot easier to read. And that's the size you can get them offline. Okay, so that is all the stuff that comes with the camera. Now the SD card is not installed and is not included with the kit. It's about the only thing that is not included with the kit. So what you want to get is a 32 gigabyte micro SD camera and it should be a class 10. And that way the, it'll react properly. Apparently they say if you have a less than a class 10 the video is going to be slow and jerky and won't work right. All right. So you open up the package and you get the little tiny micro SD card out. This one is already out. And you got to open up the camera. And what you do is you take this little, this is a little lock thing on the top here. And it, this takes several hands. You slide that over in the direction of the little arrow and you pull back, you lift up on the lock. And don't laugh, this is going to probably take some work here. These things are very tight. And it's kind of hard to do two things at once. All right, now that is unlocked. And you pivot this back and you actually lift it up like that. Now you can pry open the back door. 
Now this has a very tight seal on it because it's waterproof. This entire camera is waterproof just like this down to 98 feet without any kind of an external case. So what you do is you just kind of gently but firmly wiggle this back door and the first time I actually had to use a screwdriver quite gently. Okay, here we go. Now it's opening up. Okay, now this one I have already got it, the SD card and the battery installed, but I'm opening it up so you can see what we got. Okay, lift this out. Okay, now there is where the SD card goes. And what you had to do was actually flip up this little silver door down there, and you then lay the SD card down inside, push the little door down, and click it into place. Okay, then you take the battery, and they come uncharged, so you're going to have to charge it. Here's the battery. Here are the contacts. And the contacts match up with these things right down there. So all you do with the battery is you slip it into place, push it down. Once it's down, it's up against the contacts and you're in. Close the back door, squeeze it as well as you can. It's going to resist a little bit. Now you have to redo this lock. So you flip it back so it goes over these little catch things there. Make sure it's over there. Okay, And then you snap it down and that is it. You're all good to go. You're locked and your battery is in. Okay, then you have to charge up your battery. Uh, so what you do there is you remove this watertight plug and you can usually do it by hand. If you really need to, you can use a, something wide and flat, maybe a big screwdriver that will go in there. Okay, you undo this plug and you'll see two ports in there. One is an HDMI port for attaching to a television. The other one is your USB port. And all you do there is you go into your stash of things that came with the camera. Get out your USB cable and your wall charging plug. This end goes into the wall charging plug. Plug the small end into the port on the camera. Sorry, it's actually the bigger hole. Okay, that's now plugged in. And you just take the other end and you plug it into the wall. Once you've got it plugged in, the plug has a little LED on it. When the battery is completely discharged, that LED will be red. Uh, when it's partly discharged, it will go to yellow. And when it's ready to go, when it's all charged up, that LED will turn green. So that's a really easy way to know when it's time to, uh, to unplug the camera. So, already all charged up, you unplug this, put this uh, waterproof plug back in, and this little tether here is so that you don't accidentally lose that plug. Makes it a little hard to tighten it down, but you can get away, get away. you can deal with it. So tighten this back up, and you can just do it by hand. Make sure it's good and snug. Make sure you get it straight. Okay, now let's explore the camera itself. On the very top, you have two little buttons that you can push. The one on this side is the power button. And if you want to turn the camera on, you push it down and you hold it for three seconds and you'll hear a tiny little chime noise and you will see the wasp cam tact emblem come up in this window. And there you go. Camera is now on. In the main screen, you're going to see a screen. And you'll have to forgive me because I leave this little protector thing on the viewfinder. I don't want to get it screwed up. But this is your LCD viewfinder. 
All right, now let's, while we got that on, let's go around the rest of the, uh, the buttons we have. That's the power button, like I said. This is your movie on, movie off button. If you want to take a video, you push this down firmly until it clicks, and you will see a little tiny red dot appear in the screen and start blinking. That means that you're recording video. When you're finished recording video, you can push this button firmly again, and it will stop. Other buttons. This is the mode button. It's got an M on it. There are three modes. You hit the first mode that it automatically goes to is video. If you push this again, it will go to your still photo mode. And if you have anything in memory, if you push it again, it will go to your uh, playback mode. As I was saying, we have three modes. When you turn the camera on, it automatically will start up in video mode. Now you know you're in video mode because there's this tiny little icon up on the top that looks like a, a movie camera. If you push the button again, you will be in still photo mode. And if you push it again, only if there's anything in the memory, you will get into playback mode. Okay? Alrighty. Now let's go back to video mode. Alright, next down you have the menu mode, menu button. If you push that once or twice, you will come into the, the various menus for each of the modes. Photo mode and video mode have different menus. If you want to get into a menu and do something, you start from here, depending on which menu you want to get into. The first click takes you to your appearance. You've got resolution, you've got cycle recording, cyclic recording, Exposure balance, uh, exposure adjustments, white balance, and these are the little scroll buttons down here. You've also got motion detection. You can shoot in, in a mode that only detects motion, and you can turn your audio recording on or off. Okay, if you want to get back out of, uh, if you want to go into something, into a, into one of these menus, you push OK, which is this button right here. It takes you into the particular menu and you get to see all of the choices that you want. You use the left or right buttons to scroll down to whichever one you want. Whether it's off or your various things here, scroll whichever one you want. When you get to the one you want, you click OK. And then when you want to get out of the menu, you just push the menu button again. Okay. Now, if you click the menu button twice, it takes you to the setup menu. Now the setup menu in is pretty much the same between both video and photo. You've got turning on and off your Wi-Fi, setting up your Wi-Fi, your Wi-Fi password, um, image rotation which allows you to either have the camera like this or like this. Now if you want to use the camera in this position you'll have to correct with a um, editing program afterwards but they are readily available usually for free. You've also got your anti-shaking, which is like a vibration damper. You can turn your LCDs, which is this screen, on or off if you're using your, uh, if you want to save power. Uh, the remote control setup here and setting up your date and time that'll show up either on the screen or not. Okay, so that is your date stamp. Auto power off. You can set up how long you want the, uh, the thing to stay on after you let it go what language you want to use it in, your TV modes, TV out, frequency, formatting, default settings, this is a huge menu here, and what version you've got. Okay, so let's get out of there. We push the menu button again. So there are, that's how you get to your menus. And now over here, this button turns on your little lights in the very front of the camera. As you can see here, there's two little LEDs right here. If I push this button once, they turn on in bright mode. If I push it a second time, they turn on into a low mode. Third time, you've got strobing. And fourth time you push it, they are off. And finally, the other buttons are the left and right, which actually are more like up and down buttons, but that's what you use to scroll through things. So that is pretty much it for all of your buttons. In the front of the camera, you have your lens. You have your two LEDs for low light, and you have a little indicator light up here. And that's pretty much everything on the camera. 
Now, let's take a look at the screen. When you're in video, video mode, there's a fair amount of information going on here. Number one, you've got the little icon up here that shows you're in video mode. This little thing over here, which looks like a waving hand, is actually shows that I've got the anti-shaking uh, option turned on. Over here is your time. This is the resolution that you're going to be shooting at, and there's a good variety of that available. This is how much memory is left in your SD card, and finally you've got how much of your battery time is left. Down at the bottom you've got your date and the actual time. And then when you come around here, there's a little picture of a microphone with a cross through it. That means that I've got the audio recording turned off for videos. And up here, it shows that I have the exposure set to plus one. So I'm trying to make things a little brighter than they would normally appear. This time of year, especially, we're in the winter time. Everything's kind of gray, kind of black. It, it, things look a little dark. So I'm going to try shooting in a, a lighter uh, exposure. All right, now say we want to uh, we want to take a video. It's pretty simple. You just set this where you want, having a point, whatever you want to look at. And when you want to start the video recording, you push this button quite firmly. You'll hear that little chirp, and you'll see that little red blink blinking light come on. And that shows that you are recording a video. One of the things that you can do with this camera that's kind of fun is you can actually zoom in and out. On things you can use these buttons right here to zoom in and out. So, like, say we're looking at uh, at this SD card right here, okay? And say you wanted to zoom in on that, so you push on these buttons over here, and you can really zoom in on what you're looking at. If you want to zoom back out, you push the other one, and all of that's recorded on your video. Now, here's another nice feature. Say I wanted to take a picture, a still photo of something, without stopping the video recording. All you have to do is, while you are recording video, and you can see the little red light blinking, is you push the power button. Just quickly, up and down, and you've now shot a still photo. All right, when you are finished with your, uh, with your video recording, just push this button down firmly. You'll hear the little chirp, and the little red blinking light goes off. And that's it, you have recorded your first video. Okay, so we've now recorded some videos and some still cam, some still photos, and you want to go back through them and see what they look like. Um, you can either download them through the USB cable under your computer, or if you're out in the field someplace and you just kind of want to make sure that you got what you got, you can go into playback mode and look at them right on the camera. So to enter playback mode, turn on the camera, and here we are in video mode, which is what it automatically goes into. You hit the mode button once, takes you to still photo mode, third time and you're in playback mode. Now you can tell that you've got videos because across the bottom you'll see the little OK with the arrow and the, the playback modes. You can use the, uh, if you want to play it back, you hit OK and uh, you, you can scroll to fast forward and stuff like that. Anyway, we're going to go to the next one. So we scroll over there and there's a still photo that I took. There's nothing playback on the bottom so it's a still photo. There's another video I took. Now, this is a really quick one that I took, so uh, let's just play this one back. All we're doing here is zooming in and out on a computer screen. All right, so we hit OK and it starts the playback. And again, there is no bit, there is no audio on this, so you won't hear anything. But uh, had a video of a computer screen, zoomed in, and it's coming. Yep, zoom back out again, and that was the end of the video. So that one's really not very good. So let's say we want to, uh, or we want to delete that. We go into menu, and here you have three choices: delete, protect, and slideshow. So if you scroll over with your buttons, you have to delete, hit OK. Now it's really going to make sure what you want to do. It the top section is uh, selection is delete this or delete all. And we don't want to delete them all. We just want to delete the one that we got. So we want to delete the current. So we go back to that. Hit OK. And then it asks you again, you sure you want to erase this? And you hit OK, and it's gone. So let me go back to what we were looking at. Now, if you want to download them, you plug in your USB cable, 
and transfer it just like a file you would to your computer and you can do it like that. Okay, so we've seen that we have the videos, we have some still shots, this is a bunch more videos. And this is one of the still shots. And again, you can go into the menu. And I didn't really think that was such a hot one, so I'm going to scroll down to delete. And push OK. Again, delete it, yes. Delete current. Yes. Erase this, yes. And it's gone. Menu again will take us back to where we were. Now, if you just wanted to take snapshots, you're not interested in doing videos at this time, what you do is you get yourself into snapshot mode. Let's see, right now we're in playback. There is video mode. And there is your snapshot mode. When you want to take just a snapshot, you just push on this little button on the top right-hand side of the camera, and you push it down until you hear that click and it actually makes a little shutter sound and you have just taken a photo. If you want to take a look at it, you go to mode, you go into playback mode, you scroll through things in playback mode, actually we're right there, and go into menu. What do we want to do to this? Well, let's just delete this because I'm not really loving these pictures of the desk. Alright, get it done to delete, you push OK. Delete current, yes, we want to hit OK. Do we want to erase this? Go down to OK and click OK and we're there again so we go back to menu. So that's how you would just take a snapshot. Okay, so that's the basic functions of the stuff that's actually on the camera. Now we're going to get into how to do this with the wrist remote. This is your wrist remote. This comes with the camera. It's all included in the price of admission. So let's say we want to start using our wrist remote to, uh, to do videos and photos with the uh, WASP camera. This will work up to about 15 feet away. Now once you've paired it with the camera, it's really easy. Right here now we're in video mode, but nothing is going on. But we want to start taking a video. So. What we do is we press this little button down here, the one with the two circles on it. Just push that. You hear that little chirp from the camera. You see that tiny little red dot going, and we are making a video. If you want to take photos while you're in this mode, while it's taking a video, you just push the square button, and it has taken a photo. Now let's say we're done stop we we are done with our video. We want to stop taking video. You push this button with the two round circles again. And you'll again hear that little chirp, which means that it's finished. You always listen for that little chirp. That's the confirmation that it's doing what you wanted it to do. And that's how simple it is to use this remote. Now let's just say you don't want to take a photo while you're taking a video, you just want to take a photo. You have to put the camera into photo mode. You'll have to push that little M button to get there. Now we're in photo mode, you want to take a photo, just push the square button and you'll hear that little shutter noise and you've just taken a photo. And that's how to use this, it's very simple. And you don't have to worry about charging this up, it comes with a watch battery already installed and if you ever need to replace it, you just open up the back, back here, and you can replace your battery. And that's how that works. One of the really cool things about this camera is that you can control it remotely from an Android or an iPhone tablet or phone or device. So which the, now this one, this camera has already been paired with my Android tablet. So after the pairing setup, which you can read all about in your instruction book, I will show you how you would uh, go ahead and do this remotely. First thing you have to do, you're going to be in video mode because you want to take a video. So, yep, yeah, we're there. 
Now we go to the second menu. So you push the menu button twice. And the first thing that's on the list says Wi-Fi. So you scroll over to there and you hit OK. And you scroll down till you highlight on and you hit OK again. The Wi-Fi signal comes on. Go to my home screen, go to my applications, and I click on the WASP TACT application, which is right up here. Open that. And there we have it. We are now looking at exactly what the WASP camera is seeing. Now you'll notice that the WASP camera itself does not have anything on the video screen. It is now showing all the video through the device. So whatever I turn the camera to look at will show up on the video screen on the uh, tablet. Okay, now, say I want to take start taking a video. I go down here and I push this little thing that almost looks like a fan. A little red light comes blinking on. We are now recording a video. If I want to stop the video, push that again. If I want to do a video playback, push that little icon down there. And now I have an entire list of all of the videos that are currently on the WASP camera. I can play back. So this is one of the videos that I had taken previously. Stop that. Go back. Get the whole list of movies I can download. So they are already downloaded. Sorry about that. So I know there's a bunch of stuff you can do here from the uh, from the tablet. Now the main function for something like this is, it, say, you've got the camera mounted in a place where it's hard to reach to control, like you've got it mounted to the top of your helmet where you can't really see it. You want to be able to turn it on and off, and you also want to be able to see what it's doing. So the uh, being able to see it through the tablet or your phone is a pretty neat function. Okay, so that's that. There's obviously a lot of other stuff we can do here with this. I have just barely begun to scratch the surface. But um, this is a very easy to use camera, even for somebody who's a real techno idiot like me. And uh, it's a lot of fun to play with. And uh, it's also very fun to play with editing videos and making things like that. So it's a good little unit. I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. That's it. Bye-bye.